Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nihongo Master Podcast. I'm your host Azra and for this week's episode, we're looking at the idol culture in Japan. They're like celebrities but on a whole other spectrum. It's no denying that Japan's music scene has been dominated by the likes of J-pop, Japanese popular music. Everywhere you go in the country, you'll see a banner promoting a girl group's latest album or a boy group advert for a brand's newest product. There's literally no escaping this idol culture. But what exactly is idol culture? And how is it different from the rest of the world? Is it similar to K-pop and their synchronized dancing groups? Or is it more like the West where the musical and vocal aspects are put forth? And why are there some disagreements about the celebrity culture in Japan? We'll have them all answered in the next few minutes. And keep your ears tuned for some related vocabulary words along the way. First and foremost, what are idols? The word idoru is written in katakana and is a gairaigo foreign loan word. I mean, you can already guess what language it loaned the word from. The English word, idol. While in English, the word has been used since the 1920s to refer to popular people. In Japan, the word only came into popularity in the 1960s. Initially, the term is used to refer to female performers manufactured into groups, but has now expanded to include male performers. For comparison, the western parallel of Japanese idols are like Backstreet Boys or Spice Girls, but even then, it doesn't fully comprehend their essence. The most popular type of idol group consists of girls, but don't underestimate the boy groups. In fact, the first ever idol group recruitment agency, Johnny and Associates, which opened in 1962, is known for pumping out boy band after boy band, every single one of them extremely successful. It was only in the 70s that the idol culture took off. Variety TV shows, or variety in Japanese, as well as magazines began advertising singing competitions, kind of like American Idol or X Factor. Tons of idols started their career this way, although those signed with recruitment agencies like Johnny's had an edge over the rest, even till today. And in the 80s, known as the golden age of idols, numerous idol groups made their debut. Baradoru, or variety show idols, were increasing rapidly as these singing competitions became a mainstay on primetime TV. Idol groups rose and fell, but the whole industry gradually built up, in the 90s, 2000s, and up till now as we speak. So to say that the idol concept is popular is quite the understatement. You won't believe the number of Japanese idol groups there is in total. Even though Johnny's, King Kids, and Arashi debuted in the 90s, they are still two of the most popular ones in the industry to this day. And if you don't already know the most famous girl group in Japan just from the unlimited ads and posters on local streets, it's AKB48. So the concept of manufactured celebrity groups have been around for decades now, and it has taken quite a chunk of the Japanese music scene. Here's a quick vocab recap. Aidoru, idol. Gairaigo, foreign loanword. Variety, variety. Baradoru, variety idol. If you've seen videos of these Japanese idols, you'll know that their basic job is to sing and dance on stage. Technically, you're right. That's the general idea. But there's more to it than just that. If they're a chika idoru, which is underground idol, they're going to have to put in way more work than the mainstream ones. Basically, once they're signed with an idol recruitment company, they don't start singing and dancing straight away. They're technically not even an idol yet. There's a lot of training to do before debuting like classes on how to behave and ways of replying, as well as lessons for singing and dancing. A couple of these newly signed talents get grouped together, which can be a hit or a miss. If you've ever had a group project with people you don't like, you just suck it up for the next couple of weeks or so till the project's over, right? Imagine having to suck it up for the rest of your career if there's someone that you absolutely despise. So yeah, lots of practice and lots of various things. When they do debut, not only do you have to sing and dance during performances, But there's also the job of marketing their new content. This can come in a few ways. The most common ones are making an appearance on reality TV shows and akushukai, handshake events. Yes, handshake. During the event, no pictures, no hanging out, just handshake. It's like a meet and greet, only with about 10 to 15 seconds of greeting, and then out you go. This kind of event pulls in the sales. Usually buying one CD will give you a chance at a ticket for the event. Otaku, which translates to geek or nerd, but in this case refers to a particular level of devoted fans, would go all out just to raise their chances at meeting their favourite idols. I'd say those are the easy aspects of the job. The hardest one is obeying the dozens and dozens of rules. 
I think the exact rules vary for different recruitment companies. But one that's mutual throughout is their strict policy on privacy. An idol's image is the perfectly imperfect person. Because they're not Prince Charming or Cinderella, the concept of normality makes them much more desirable for their fans. To protect this image, idols aren't allowed to be seen publicly with a significant other or any, or any similar types of scandals. Dating an idol must be extremely tough, sneaking around and all. While some might argue that an idol's job is easy, others would disagree. There is the sacrifice of the little pleasures in life and the extreme effort put in. Anyway, here's a quick vocab recap. Chika Idoru, underground idol. Chika means under or below, so subway is Chika Tetsu. Otaku, geek or nerd. Akushukai, handshake event. By the way, if you haven't checked out our official website yet, why not give it a browse? At Nihongo Master, we offer efficient Japanese lessons that are quick, easy, and fun for Japanese language learners of all levels, from beginners to advanced. Our smart tools will assist you in areas where you need a little bit of a push and congratulate you on the ones you've aced. With a community of over 50,000 Japanese students, you're not alone on your learning journey. Make new friends and improve together with our point system, collecting points as you go along. Ask away any questions you have on our group discussion pages. There's sure to be others as well as our Japanese instructors that are quick to answer. You can also take Nihongo Master with you on the go and learn Japanese as you trot the globe. Practical, right? Even though the idol culture is continuously rising, there have been recurring problems in the idol culture. The biggest one is the case of assault and harassment, especially when it comes to female idols. It seems like every other weekend that there's a new news report about female idol being stalked by their obsessed fans. And that's not even the worst part. Because of this culture of manufacturing female talents and putting them into the public eye, there has been a worrying pattern of fan bases consisting largely of older men. Japan's already having a tough time with this issue in general. And in my opinion, the idol culture is not doing any good to resolve that. Before we get too deep into this topic, the other problem that the idol culture has created is that the younger generation is given this idea that they can get out of gakko school early to pursue an idol career. Apparently, this is a legitimate reason to be granted leave from schools. It's quite surprising to hear that, especially when Japan's quite known to value education pretty highly. So we're here wondering, what is the future, or mirai, in Japanese, of idol groups? Will they be the same going forward, or will there be a change in the system to combat these rising problems? I hope, for the sake and safety of the idols, something's going to be done. Let's quickly recap the vocab. Gakko, school. Mirai, future. So there's a brief glimpse into the Japanese idol culture. From flashy stage outfits and extensive training to unique marketing events, this part of the media culture in Japan is pretty far from dying out. Head over to the Nihongo Master blog if you're interested in reading up on them some more. And if you're keen on picking up some more Japanese for yourself, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the official website to learn more. Thank you so much for listening in. Join me in the next one where I'll be walking you down the avenue of Japan's rich culture. Mata ne!